In the early 1960s, the Soviet Union quietly began work on an aircraft that defied everything bomber designers thought was possible. It was meant to fly faster than Mach 3, higher than most interceptors, and strike targets the enemy believed untouchable. This was not a concept sketch or propaganda fantasy. It became the Soviet T-4 Sotka. Built by the Sukhoi Design Bureau, the T-4 was intended to challenge American strategic superiority head-on. It targeted aircraft carrier groups and high-value assets with unprecedented speed and altitude. Only a handful of prototypes were ever completed, and even fewer flights were conducted. Yet what the T-4 achieved still unsettles Cold War aviation history. By the late 1950s, the balance of strategic power was shifting rapidly. The United States had deployed aircraft carriers as mobile nuclear platforms across the world's oceans. These groups were protected by layered air defenses and interceptor aircraft. The Soviet Union needed a new way to threaten them directly. Existing Soviet bombers were increasingly vulnerable. Subsonic and early supersonic aircraft could be intercepted long before reaching their targets. Surface-to-air missile networks continued to expand. Speed and altitude became the only viable counters. Soviet planners began exploring extreme solutions. One proposal called for a bomber fast enough to outrun interceptors entirely. Another envisioned a platform that could launch long-range missiles from outside defended airspace. These ideas demanded unprecedented performance. In 1961, the Soviet government issued a requirement for such an aircraft. The design had to exceed Mach 3 at high altitude. It also needed sufficient range to operate over oceanic targets. This immediately narrowed the field of capable design bureaus. The Sukhoi Design Bureau proposed what became the T-4 Satka. It emphasized speed, altitude, and precision strike rather than payload size. The aircraft would rely on advanced materials and systems. Nothing comparable existed in Soviet service. From the beginning, the project carried enormous technical risk. Heat management, structural stress, and propulsion all pushed beyond proven limits. The design required technologies still under development. The T-4 was conceived as a leap, not an evolution. The T-4 Saka was designed around sustained high-speed flight. At Mach 3, aerodynamic heating became a primary constraint rather than an afterthought. Conventional aluminum alloys were no longer sufficient. This forced Soviet engineers into unfamiliar territory. Titanium and high-temperature steel became essential materials. Welding and machining these metals required entirely new industrial techniques. Soviet factories struggled to achieve consistent quality. Manufacturing complexity slowed progress from the start. The aircraft's shape reflected its mission. A long, slender fuselage minimized drag at high Mach numbers. Small delta wings were optimized for supersonic crews rather than low-speed handling. Every line favored speed over flexibility. Propulsion posed another major challenge. The T-4 used the Kolsov RD-36-41 turbojet, developed specifically for extreme temperature and pressure. These engines were mounted in pairs beneath the fuselage. Reliability at sustained Mach 3 remained uncertain throughout testing. Avionics and sensors were equally ambitious. The aircraft was designed to carry advanced radar capable of tracking naval targets at long range. It was also intended to guide long-range anti-ship missiles. Integrating these systems pushed Soviet electronics to their limits. Even routine operations became complex. The nose section featured a drooping mechanism to improve visibility during takeoff and landing. This mirrored solutions seen on other high-speed aircraft worldwide. The T-4 demanded constant compromise between performance and practicality. The Soviet T-4 Saka made its first flight on August 22, 1972. Test pilot Vladimir Ilyashin was at the controls. The flight marked the culmination of more than a decade of design and political struggle. 
Initial handling was reported as stable at subsonic speeds. Even these early flights demonstrated the aircraft's extreme complexity. Flight testing progressed cautiously. The program focused first on basic controllability and systems integration. Engineers prioritized safety over performance milestones. Only a limited flight envelope was explored. This slow pace reflected the risks involved. The T-4 never reached its intended Mach 3 operational profile. Test flights remained well below maximum design speed. Thermal stress, engine reliability, and structural concerns limited expansion. This reality later became distorted in popular retellings. Official Soviet sources were careful not to exaggerate achievements. Despite these limits, the aircraft validated key design concepts. Aerodynamic stability at high altitude was confirmed. Systems operated as expected under demanding conditions. The airframe handled heat loads better than initially feared. These successes proved the design was not a dead end. Crew workload during testing was extremely high. Pilots relied heavily on instrumentation due to restricted forward visibility. Systems monitoring consumed constant attention. Automation was limited by the era's technology. The T-4 demanded precision rather than improvisation. Ground support requirements were immense. Specialized equipment was needed for maintenance and inspection. Engine servicing remained particularly challenging. Each flight required extensive preparation. This further restricted sortie rates. By 1974, only 10 test flights had been completed. The program was advancing technically but stagnating operationally. Costs continued to rise as progress slowed. Strategic priorities were also beginning to shift. The T-4's future was no longer guaranteed. Despite technical promise, the T-4 faced immense political challenges. The Soviet Ministry of Aviation Industry favored Tupolev designs for strategic bombers. Sukhoi's independent project was viewed with suspicion. Decisions were influenced as much by bureaucracy as by engineering. Funding was limited and closely monitored. Budget constraints became increasingly severe. The T-4 required specialized materials, factories, and engines. Each flight consumed enormous resources. Competing projects were prioritized to maximize perceived strategic benefit. The ministry ultimately questioned whether the cost justified the potential. Inter-service rivalry also undermined the program. The Soviet Air Force had other options in the 222 and 222M series. Sukhoi's bomber threatened to disrupt established procurement plans. Institutional politics weighed heavily against continuation. Every technical achievement was met with bureaucratic hurdles. Engineering challenges continued to slow the program. Heat-resistant materials were difficult to produce at scale. Engines could not reliably sustain intended performance. Flight testing remained limited by infrastructure. Technical progress was insufficient to overcome political headwinds. Strategic doctrine began to evolve in the mid-1970s. Missile technology, including the R-36 ICBM, became central to nuclear deterrence. The need for high-speed manned bombers diminished. The T-4's original mission was rendered less relevant. Political priorities shifted accordingly. Ultimately, the program was canceled in 1974 after only a handful of prototypes flew. Sukhoi engineers had proved many aerodynamic concepts. However, the combination of cost, political opposition, and shifting strategic doctrine was insurmountable. The T-4 was sidelined despite its achievements. Its technological lessons were absorbed into later Soviet designs. The T-4 Sakha remained a remarkable example of Soviet ambition. It demonstrated innovative solutions for high-speed, high-altitude flight. Many concepts tested on the aircraft influenced future aircraft like the Su-24 and MiG-25. While never operational, it left a lasting imprint on aerospace engineering.
the T-4's story became a symbol of what could have been. The Soviet T-4 Satka never entered operational service, yet its legacy endured in aerospace engineering. The aircraft demonstrated advanced aerodynamic solutions for high-speed flight. Its crescent-shaped wing and high-altitude stability informed later Soviet designs. Engineers gained critical knowledge about materials and thermal stress. These lessons were applied to the MiG-25 and other high-speed projects. While political and budgetary pressures ended the program, Sukhoi's work was not wasted. The T-4 proved that extreme speed and altitude could be approached, even if not fully realized. Prototype flights validated key concepts under real conditions. Lessons learned guided Soviet research on reconnaissance and strike aircraft. The program highlighted the limits of ambition in the context of Soviet bureaucracy. The aircraft also provided insight into Cold War strategic thinking. The need for rapid, high-altitude penetration shaped design priorities. Yet, by the 1970s, missile technology had begun to replace manned bombers as the primary nuclear deterrent. The T-4 occupied a transitional space between experimental innovation and practical application. Its story reflects the changing nature of Cold War air power. From a technological standpoint, the T-4 was remarkable. It pushed engines, airframes, and avionics to the limits of the era. High-temperature materials and specialized fuel systems were tested for the first time in Soviet service. This provided valuable data for subsequent aircraft development. The T-4's technical achievements influenced projects across multiple design bureaus. Despite its cancellation, the aircraft captured the imagination of engineers and historians alike. Its combination of speed, altitude, and unconventional design made it one of the most ambitious Soviet projects of its time. The T-4 showed what was possible when innovation met geopolitical urgency. It also demonstrated the fragility of such projects under political scrutiny. The story of the Satka became a legend in aviation circles. Even today, the T-4 is remembered as a symbol of Soviet aerospace ambition. Its influence is evident in reconnaissance and strike aircraft that followed. Engineers studied its strengths and limitations for decades. The aircraft's brief flights were enough to provide decades of lessons. The T-4 represents a remarkable, if unrealized, chapter in Cold War aviation history. Ultimately, the Soviet T-4 Satka stands as a testament to innovation constrained by politics. It combined daring design, cutting-edge materials, and ambitious engineering. Though it never flew in combat, the knowledge it generated shaped future aircraft. Its story is a reminder of the fine line between visionary success and bureaucratic limitation. The Satka remains an icon of what the Cold War demanded and what it could not always deliver.